Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and today we are talking about the third episode of Agile Methodology. As a part of this, we will be understanding what are the different frameworks which are available. And when we talk about the Agile frameworks and how exactly they are different from each other. And at the same time, uh, when we understand the differences between various frameworks, we will also be understanding what exactly is Scrum and why Scrum is trending compared to other development models or the different frameworks while within the Asia. So it's a lot, it's a lot of important things which we will be covering as a part of this tutorial. So I want you to have a look on this. So let's get started. we will be understanding various Agile frameworks and what is Scrum in more detail. To begin with, first of all, let's understand what are the various Agile frameworks which are followed wide across the organizations globally in order to develop their product. To understand the basic thing here is that there are different frameworks which are available in order to work with different types of products, different types of organizations and different domains of the product. Thus, we do have various uh, frameworks which are available in order to be adopted to create your own product. Thus, an organization must understand that which framework is most helpful for them in order to meet the expectations of the client and deliver the product at the end of the day. Thus, there are very much important parameters about each of these framework to be understood in details before selecting one of them. But yes, namely, if we have to talk about some of the frameworks, here we have Scrum, Extreme Programming, Dynamic System Development Method, Feature Driven Development, Adaptive Software Development, The Crystal Method, Lean Software Development, Disciplined Agile, Scaled Agile Framework, rapid application development where all of these models are being practiced or all of these frameworks are being practiced in different organizations today but most of them are following some of the popular frameworks quite commonly like scrum or you talk about scaled agile framework crystal method these are some of the commonly commonly used uh, frameworks in agile methodology so in this tutorial, we will be exploring more about Scrum as this will be helpful for us to follow Jira in more detail and we'll be also creating the project according to that. Thus, let's understand a little more about Scrum in this tutorial. To begin with Scrum, Scrum is an agile process that allows us to focus on delivering the highest business value in the shortest time. Now, unlike traditional approaches, again, Scrum helps you to create the business values and deliver the work products in the shortest interval of time, where the shortest interval of time could be measured as two to four weeks of time, which is probably a fortnight or maybe at least a month long. It allows us to rapidly and repeatedly check actual working software quickly in this interval of time. And every fortnight or every month when you complete one particular sprint or a cycle or an iteration where these are the different synonyms which can be used by different organization, you actually deliver a product at the end of each sprint. The business will set the priorities of the activities or the tasks to be covered as a part of each sprint. When you talk about the Scrum characteristics, it has some of the unique features or characteristics which the team can understand or a learner should know about following the Scrum. For example, self-organizing team to determine the best way to deliver the highest priority features. Again, from the previous tutorials when we were talking about principles, we have understood that a Agile methodology consists of a development team which consists further of self-motivated and self-organized teams. So here the team will organize everything in order to determine that how much time will they take in order to deliver a piece of code. So delivering that piece of code will be completely responsibility of the development team and the other responsible people of the organization will be assisting them to provide the necessary details. The product progresses in a series of month-long sprints, again, depending on the type of iteration. If your sprints are lasting for fortnight, probably 14 days, or a month long, probably between 2 to 4 weeks of time, you can call that as a sprint. 
Requirements are captured as items in a list called as product backlog. We will be further detailing the product backlog, that how exactly a product backlog can be created and how you exactly you divide the task into broken forms to be listed in the product backlog and how the product backlog can actually help you to pick the items from there to be further processed into development and testing. It uses a general rule to create an agile environment for delivering projects. So obviously the Scrum comes with uniqueness about its own framework in order to deliver and create that agile environment which is necessary for delivering the same. To understand a little more better, here is a snapshot of the agile methodology in crisp way to follow what exactly happens in this Scrum sprint. So first of all, it starts and begins with a vision that what is that we should achieve at the end of the sprint. That means what are our expectations, what are that piece of code or working software which you are targeting to deliver at the end of this particular sprint. And then you pick up the product backlog where you list the tasks to be completed as a part of this particular sprint. Remember team, every single sprint is a cyclic process where you pick up certain set of tasks to be completed in that particular sprint and be responsible for delivering the same at the end of the sprint. Now from the product backlog, which contains all your tasks for that particular user story, you take certain items from that to the sprint backlog, which will only be processed in that particular sprint. Now obviously the other items of the product backlog remain in the product backlog. Thus the document is called as or this artifact is called as product backlog. That means there are many other tasks which need to be done but they still stay here because you only selected few of them to be covered in this particular sprint. Don't forget the agile follows the principle of doing smaller tasks but completing that on the time which you committed. Now, the sprint will further get started by following the generic activities like working on designing it, coding it, testing it, and reviewing it. So that cycle continues in order to make sure that whatever you have done is verified and validated. Now this will be, again, depending on the duration of the sprint between two weeks to four weeks of time. At this point, you have certain ceremonies which happen during the sprint or probably during or before the sprint begins. But yes, we will be talking about the ceremonies in more detail in the next upcoming tutorials. So here, let's talk a little bit about daily scrum. So daily scrum call is just like a stand-up meeting where you gather all the team members and the scrum master is the one who will be addressing the development team in order to ask few questions and get the response for that. Generally, there are three questions which a Scrum Master will ask the development team every day during the stand-up or daily Scrum meeting. With number one, what is that you have done yesterday? What is that you have planned to do today? And are there any challenges or roadblocks which you are facing? So generally, the Scrum Master only asks these questions to the development team to assist and nourish them in order to complete their task on time. And this happens every day for hardly 15 minutes, thus we call them as stand-up meetings. Once you complete that, the sprint review and retrospective is another activity which happens at the end. So we will be again talking in more detail about the sprint review and retrospective, which actually called as the closure activities of the sprint in order to understand the lessons learned and the common mistakes you have done to avoid them right from the next sprint. Not only that, there are a lot of things which happen as a part of it, which we will see in the next tutorials. And once you're done with the sprint, you pick up the next sprint in order to pick up the rest of the task from the product backlog. Again, don't forget, you do everything in increment and not all the tasks will be taken at the same time. So you will just pick another few set of activities or tasks from the product backlog and put it on the sprint backlog. So Scrum Sprint is also includes the Scrum project. It makes uh, progresses in series of sprints. So each iteration can be also called as a sprint or simply even iterations, which typically uh, last for two to four weeks of time, depending on different organizations and different products which you work on. The product is designed, coded and tested during the sprint, which is the common cycle which we follow anywhere. But remember, no changes during sprints are accepted. 
That will be only accepted when you talk about completing the sprint. Now, that might be contradicting with your understanding that you did say earlier that this is possible, we can accept changes late in development. But here you say that changes are not accepted during sprint. So yes, team, you need to start creating that difference between the team, uh, the sprint and the cycle. So first, the client is free to share us any kind of changes. But once we have picked a particular task to be developed as a part of the sprint, we complete that. And if meanwhile, there was a change requested on that particular feature from the customer, we will only take that change in the next iteration, not during the ongoing sprint. So that is what we mean to say when the team is busy working on a sprint. And if there is a change related to that feature, which you are busy developing will be only accepted after the sprint completes and you will fulfill that in the very next sprint. At the end, we do have a lot of artifacts as a part of Scrum in successfully way. So Scrum team uses a lot of artifacts to run the Scrum successfully to make that successful or help the organization to reach the expectations and deliver the milestones. To begin with, the very first thing is the impediment backlog, where impediment backlog is something which is a simple list of hurdles, obstacles, snares, or debtors or blockers or simply impediments that cause waste in the organization. Now that's a very high level language. In simple terms, it could be even your uh, challenges which you have faced uh, in order to understand the activity or probably the task which you're going to perform, insufficient information. Maybe one of the person is on leave or probably not feeling well and not available during the sprint. So all those factors which obstacles you to continue your work or deliver the expected item at the end of the sprint is what you call it as impediment backlog. So you put all these challenges there that during the sprint, this person was on leave due to an emergency and we could not complete this or probably we may expect that there might be a delay or probably one of the feature will not be tested. So there are each of the activity which will be broken further that a feature will be created, tested, created, tested. Now creation is getting impacted or testing is getting impacted will be detailed into the impediment backlogs. The next thing here is product backlog, which we know from the previous discussions. This is the broken form of a user story into simpler task forms, which is the smallest unit, which will be taken at one point of time in order to be developed as a part of the sprint. Where sprint backlog is a sprint specific backlog where you pick up the list of tasks which you will be completing during a particular sprint. So product backlog may have all the possible tasks which you will be covering as a part of user story. But sprint backlog will only have those tasks from the product backlog which you will be covering during a particular sprint. Whereas when you talk about the burn down charts, burn down charts helps you to actually represent the activities or the work left to do versus time in a graphical representation. Something similar to what you see at the bottom of this slide. There's a graph which shows that how exactly you can measure that how much work is left to do and how much time do we have to do those job. And this will basically help you to plan your activities very effectively to complete these job within the given sprint time. And it, it really helps you to uh, align your activities, allocate the activities to the resources within the development team or gear up some time to deliver the product on time and meet the expectations and the acceptance criteria to fulfill the needs of the principles and the manifesto of Agile. So in this tutorial, we have covered various Agile frameworks which, which are used industry-wide and what is Scrum in more detail. So we'll be talking further about a lot of other artifacts, processes, ceremonies, and work item types in upcoming tutorials. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to respond to your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.